What's up boys? Welcome back to another MX Bikes video and today we have a little bit of a chill one for you Just a little talking video as we rip around Walnut V2 Also make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button because there's about 10 bajillion of you not subscribed and That would be cool if we had more subs, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, yeah, a little bit of a bucket list Kind of something I never thought I would be able to do um, got to knock that out, which some of you, this may not be a big deal. Some of you, this is going to be really cool. Um, if you guys know me, you guys know I love music. Like, I love music. And if you guys know me, I love metal. I'm a big metal head. Always have been, okay? <clears throat> and, well, I got a phone call from a friend about a year and a half ago. Uh, and said, hey man, I have tickets to a Metallica concert in Boston next year. Would you be interested in going? And I was like, dude, yeah, like that would be cool. And what's cool is this friend is somebody that I met through content. This is not somebody that I knew IRL. This is somebody that started following me. Guys, I had 30 followers on Instagram, okay? Uh, by the time you're watching this video, I'm closing in on a hundred thousand total followers across all my socials and at the time i had maybe a hundred total followers maybe across all my socials so this dude aaron has been around for a million years okay been around for a very very long time and he hit me up and asked if i would go and i said sure well the time came and so it was a metal a two-day metallica concert up in boston um, which he invited me to, which is crazy. I mean, still, I had never met Aaron. Uh, I mean, we've talked on the phone before, and, you know, I mean, he's been in the streams and stuff forever. So I felt like I knew him, but we had never met in person. And I flew up to Boston, and we had a hotel together, and we went to the concert together. And it was just awesome. It was really cool to meet him and spend some time with him. Uh, now, it was actually super crazy. I don't understand, like, the trip, there were so many things that, I don't wanna say went wrong, but just like, it was so chaotic. <laughs> uh, the first night, okay, so they played on Friday. Uh, I got there, I flew in Thursday, and then they played, uh, which it was Pantera and Metallica on Friday, by the way. I I'm a huge Pantera fan, um, but I'm a, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in Pantera. They did not play Cemetery Gates, which if you guys know anything about Pantera, that's like, I don't know, that's that's the song. And they didn't play it, and I, I, I was so sad. Like, literally heartbroken that they didn't play it, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. And then Metallica went on, and they were pretty good. They played a lot of songs that I wasn't really expecting. Um, if you guys are Metallica fans, they played Harvester, Sorrow, Leper Messiah, and King Nothing back to back to back, which those were like three songs that were not on my radar at all to be played, like at all. And then they dropped them. That was like the second, third, and fourth song, uh, which was crazy. I did. Those are like three of my favorite songs from them too, so that was cool. Uh, anyway, after that concert was over. Uh, we decided we would Uber back, and, uh, well, <laughs> we ended up walking, like, almost five miles, because no Uber would pick us up from the stadium, uh, and we walked, we walked to, like, 1.30 in the morning before we finally got picked up, and then it was just chaos, uh, and then Saturday, there was actually nothing going on at all, um, so we just kind of hung out. And then we went to Boston, just kind of wandered around there for a little bit. And then Sunday was the concert again. And the plan was Sunday, we were going to go to the concert, which, you know, ends at like midnight. And then I was going to have, I was flying out at like five in the morning to be back here at my house. Probably, I was hoping to be home by like 930 in the morning. And... Yeah, I did not go that well. Uh, that was going to be Monday. I was going to be home was the plan. All right. Well, they canceled my flight at about 
Let's oh, see, my flight was at like 5.40. At like 2 in the morning, they canceled my flight. We had just... Oh, no, it was like at 11 p.m. I was still at the concert they, when they canceled my flight. And they said, okay, we'll follow up. We'll tell you what to do. Well, they didn't tell me what to do for hours after that. And then <laughs> they decided that they would uh, basically just said, hey, we'll put you on a flight. Don't worry. We'll cover it. We'll cover it. Don't worry. But you can't fly out till Wednesday. And I was like, uh, well, that is not helpful for me. And hotels were like seven, eight hundred dollars a night because everyone apparently Boston canceled a ton of flights, like thousands of flights, like a ton. Uh, so there was no hotels or if they, you did have hotels, they were super expensive. Um, so that wasn't an option and my ticket, the refund on the ticket was really not a lot of money. Uh, cause I booked it kind of in advance and it, you know, flying from PA up to Boston was, I actually flew out of Baltimore and it really wasn't, it was like 40 bucks each way. So it was super inexpensive. So I opted to take the refund because I was like, you know, Boston's only six hours from my house. I'll just take the refund. I'll rent a car. It'll cost me a few extra hundred bucks, but like, whatever, you know, it's fine. Who cares? We'll get home. We'll still get home Monday and it'll be cool. So I booked the car, you know, and I was looking at Boston to rent a car and well, Boston was super expensive because everyone got canceled. Uh, so. I looked into Providence, Rhode Island, and cars were way less expensive. And where our hotel was, Providence was like basically the same distance away as Boston. So it really wasn't like an extra, really that big of a deal. I just went south instead of north. And so I booked my Uber in the morning, went down to Providence. It was like an $89 Uber, which is crazy, but you know, that is, is what it is. And, uh, Stood in line for like an hour and a half for this Uber uh, because there was a million people renting cars because everybody was doing the same thing I was doing. Uh, and then finally got up to the line, you know, handed them my card. Everything was fine. And then they're like, oh, since you're taking a car one way, because I was just going to rent the car in Providence and then drop it off where I live, obviously. Uh, they said, we have to have a credit card. And I was like, well, I've never, I've never, like, they wouldn't take a debit card. And I've never rented a car one way, nor have I ever had them ask for a credit card. Well, I don't really have credit cards, boys. I, I got rid of them a long time ago. Uh, so, I have a credit card. And I even got, like, I called my dad. And, you know, he sent his to me. Just It was just for the deposit, you know, that would have been restored in, like, the next day. And they wouldn't let me use his card because obviously he had to be there in person. I kind of figured that, but I thought I would just try it. Well, it, we, it didn't work. Uh, and so basically they're like, yeah, sorry, you can't rent this car. If you want to rent a, a car using a debit card, you can, but you can't, if you book it now, you can't pick it up for 24 hours. And I was like, well, what the heck, man? Like, what am I going to do? We didn't have a hotel. We didn't have anything. So my friend had already left too, by the way, he was already gone. So we were, we were no longer together. So then I said, okay. And started looking, I looked into trains. I looked into taking a bus home uh, and nothing made sense. I looked in, you know, worst case was I was going to have my wife come pick me up. But at this time it was kind of getting kind of late in the day, you know, it was like two o'clock and we have kids, right? So driving six hours with the four year old and the six year old is actually driving like eight and a half hours, you know? And I don't know, it just wasn't making any sense for having, and then we were gonna have to get a hotel anyway. And so it was just like this whole thing. And so what I finally, I finally found a flight that left. So this was Monday, it left Tuesday at like 3 p.m. And it was out of Boston. <laughs> so I booked that flight. Cause like literally as I was booking flights, uh, man, it was like flights were going like, as I was just looking at the flights, like literally they were going 
it within minutes. They were putting flights up and they were just booking out immediately. So as soon as I saw that one, I booked it. It was super expensive, uh, but it was the only way that I could get home in a reasonable time. So I booked it. Well, now I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, not in Boston. And I pull up my Uber. Ubers were like hundreds of dollars because everyone was doing the same thing. And it was really far and it was like rush hour time. So I was like, I'm not taking an Uber. I'm not spending $200 on an Uber. So I, I took a train from Rhode Island. <laughs> I took a train from Rhode Island back up to Boston. And then I got to Boston at like 5.30 p.m., right? Now, on Monday, and my flight wasn't until 3 p.m. on Tuesday. And I didn't have a hotel. And I, I was thinking, well, you know, I'll just go to the ho I'll just go to the airport and I'll sleep in the airport. I'll hang out. You know, I'll get some food there or whatever, you know, we'll just hang out there. Well, I decided that I would stay in Boston for a little while and, you know, it was really nice. It was like a cool night, you know, it was like 70 degrees and it was clear and, you know, I was right there on the water. I was like, all right, man, I'll just get some food here. I'm just going to hang out. People wash. We'll just chill. I listened to some tunes. I read my Bible a bit, you know, like just... It was actually really nice. Noth nowhere to go, nothing to do. Was just chilling on the water, reading, eating, uh, you know, talking to random people that would come sit next to me, had conversations. I don't know. It was a good time. Um, but then my phone started getting a little low. I was like, all right, well, it was, it was about 8:30 at night at this time. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, I'll, I guess I'll I'll head back to the airport now, and. Then, you know, I'll, I'll go in, I'll get through security and we'll just, you know, lock in a couple movies till one, two in the morning. We'll try to get some sleep or whatever. So I Uber the, to the, to the airport and <laughs> we get, we get there. Uh, you know, I changed, put some, it was cold, man. It started getting cold. So I put some pants on, you know, I was wearing shorts. I always wear shorts, but I put some pants on, changed and checked, got my, my tickets and all that. Then went up to security, gave them my thing. And they were like, all right, man, have a good day. And as I started to walk, he stopped me and was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, sorry, your, your flight's not until tomorrow. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, you can't. Like, we don't, we shut the airport down at three in the morning and reopen it at three, like past security. He's like, so you can't come back till 3.30. I was like, what? Like, what? I never, dude, I've been in airports at all hours of the night, brothers. Never in my life have I heard that. I guess I've never gone to one at three in the morning, especially with my flight not till the next day. So I don't know, maybe that, I didn't know that was a thing. So, <laughs> so now he's like, you can stay here. And he like pointed at like baggage claim. and was like, you can stay here if you'd like. And it was like nine. And so I had six hours to kill until 3.30 and I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I sat in baggage claim for like an hour and a half, uh, got really bored, started walking around and I was like, dude, I need to like, I need to go sit somewhere, like have a drink, like a Coke or something. I needed, I needed some energy, you know, I wanted, and I didn't want to spend, you know, $9 on just a vending machine coke so i was like man i would like to go sit somewhere so i started walking around the airport well i started seeing signs for they had a, a hotel in the airport i was like oh that's money i'm sure they got like a bar or something i can go chill maybe they got maybe they got a little bar food you know get some wings or something you know what I'm saying? and uh <laughs> so i walk around i get to the hotel it's like a mile and a half away i get to the hotel and sure enough if I land this, you owe me a dollar. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, anyway, I got to the hotel. Sure enough, they had a bar open. So I sat, ordered me a Coke. And it was like, at this point, it was like 11.15. And he was like, all right, bro. Hey, just so you know, we close in, you know, 35 minutes. They were closing at, at midnight. I was like, dang it, man. I, I, like, that TV's in there. I was just going to chill in there as, like, as long as they let me. So I got 35 minutes. And then, man, I started getting real tired. 
I, I had walked so much, man. Over the course from like Thursday to Monday, we, we had done like 50 something miles of walking. And, you know, we were up late at concerts and like, ah, I was, I was just cooked. I was really tired. Uh, and so I started getting really, really like, man, I need to go to bed. And uh, so I, well, I leave the bar and I start seeing a bunch of people. This hotel was huge, huge lobby. And I started looking around and there's people sleeping everywhere. And I was like, all right, maybe like, I mean, I can get one of these little chairs, you know, take a nap. So I did. <laughs> I got in one of these random chairs in this hotel lobby, like off in the corner. And man, that thing was comfy and I was out. I, I, I passed out. Well, not, but 45 minutes later, something's tapping me on the leg and it's this big security guard. And he's like, all right, bro. Like, hey, sorry, I hate to wake you up, but the, uh, you know, we're closing. The lobby's closed, you gotta go somewhere. And I looked at my phone and it was like 1.15. So then I went back to the airport and hung out for an hour and a half. And then they finally, they let me back into, uh, what's it called? Through security at 3.30. And then I had what? 11 more hours to kill before my flight took off, which honestly that wasn't really bad. I don't know why, but like once I was through security, it really wasn't as like, horrible as everything else and then yeah hopped on my plane and came home but that was a crazy trip man but i gotta say um a couple things first of all thank you to aaron for inviting me out providing the hotel and the tickets uh it was amazing it was really really fun i never ever thought in my life i would be able to see metallica live I, i'm not i wasn't like a not like a <clears throat> crazy fanboy Metallica, but I've always really enjoyed their music. And my earliest memory with music is I remember my dad used to listen to the Black Album for Metallica a lot and my mom never liked me listening to it. <laughs> and my earliest memory is sneaking the Black Album on cassette into my room when I was like six or seven years old and playing it on a SpongeBob cassette player. That's like my first memory with music. That and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, and so to be able to see some of that, you know, they did all the songs, man. They did everything. It was just really, was just really cool. And I was just really blessed to be able to, to see that. It's just cool, man. I had never, I never thought I'd be able to do that. I never thought I'd be able to afford going to one of those concerts or by the time that I was able to afford it they would be you know retired in some way or another you know what I mean so anyway kind of a different video I know I just kind of yap for a while but man it was a really really cool experience and I had a lot of fun uh it, and yeah they're really good man Metallic is really good Pantera was all right uh they kind of let me down by not playing Cemetery Gates uh Five Finger Death Punch opened on Sunday, and they were pretty good. I, I will say not as... Their set got cut kind of short because it was raining. Um, and there was lightning, but they were they were pretty good. You know, I'm not a huge fan, uh, but I did appreciate... Appreciate their, their show had a lot of energy, so that was good, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah, very surprised by the, like, 65-year-old men that is Metallica, you know, that they they kind of ripped so anyway hold on I'm on, a, I'm on an absolutely Stanley Danley right now so we're gonna try to finish this lap oh my goodness oh my gosh what a scrub that was that was crazy okay going inside here I really want to hot lap this track but I haven't really spent a lot of time on it um I think I go outside here right? I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing oh I wonder if you can, can you jump that and then I don't know Let's see, I know you're supposed to hit these outsides like this. Okay, 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 okay. A little... I'm on a Bernie, Bernie, Bernier. I saw the world records like a 23 or something, or a 21. No, oh, I threw it! I was two seconds up. It was like a 27. Maybe a 26. Man, anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. I love you. And thank you guys for watching. I know, kind of a different video, but... 
felt like I need to share. Okay, so have a good day. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one.